I'm Gene Grant here in the studios of New Mexico PBS with our line opinion panelists joining me on Zoom. Now we're about to record this week's show, but before we do, we always like to warm up by taking a turn at other issues that are on our minds. Let me turn to this great panel here. Let me start with Inez Russell Gomez up in Santa Fe, still hot up there. <laughs> no relief for Santa Fe compared to anywhere else. What's your one more thing this week? Well, we found out um, this morning that the Union Protectiva, which is the oldest Hispanic uh, fraternal organization in the country, at least that's how they build themselves, has filed a lawsuit against Mayor Alan Weber and the city of Santa Fe mm. in connection with the toppling of the obelisk. So they are saying that the city failed to protect a historic place in the city and didn't follow the rules as uh, it should have under the historic preservation guidelines. Mm -hmm. And they filed yesterday in district court in Santa Fe, and they're having a big to do on the plaza today at 1.30. Um, people who are interested in politics and follow all the stories, I think will find it interesting that James Hallinan, who is the person who accused the governor of spilling ice water and then touching him inappropriately, is helping the group with the marketing. Wow. There's another political element in that Union Protectiva is not allowed to be for or against people in the mayoral race because they're a nonprofit. However, it's very clear they want to see Alan Weber leave and get him out, hmm. and they are doing everything they can within the law to do that. So let me ask you a question. The suit itself, what are they, is it for financial harm or? What, what are they, what's the end result they're looking for from the suit? They want the obelisk back. The Just, reparations in the suit are you must rebuild the obelisk. As it was previously? <laughs> as it was previously. Gotcha. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Wow, that's fascinating. So 1.30 today uh, on the plaza, big meeting. Interesting. Yep. Do you know if anyone's going to have a live stream of that, Bunny Chance? I don't. I, I, I assume we will, but we're still not back, everybody, in the newsroom. Right. And if we don't have a live stream, we'll have something shortly thereafter, I'm sure. Okay, I'll check the Santa Fe New Mexican first and yep. see what's going on there for sure. Interesting. So glad you brought that to our attention. Uh, Senator Didi Feldman, what's your one more thing this week? Well, um, the thing that I have is a sad thing, uh, and that is uh, the alarming number of pedestrian deaths that, there are, that are happening in Albuquerque as a result of uh, speeders and uh, a woman was killed right outside my my house uh, in the North Valley uh, on I on Indian School Road at the uh, ditch crossing there at Alameda Drain and you know in the valley there are a lot of uh, people out uh, jogging walking along the ditch walking their dogs um, it's it's become a very common thing it always was but during the pandemic uh, it's been really busy. And there are crossings um, of major arterials in Albuquerque. And unfortunately, the, the roads are so wide uh, that they are just speedways for people. And when there's a curve or when there's, um, um, you know, a, a, the width makes people just go fast. And this has been a problem in our neighborhood for a number of years. And, you know, the city is finally um, uh, catching on and trying to do this uh, road diet. They call it a road diet, wherein they try to calm the traffic by restriping the streets, narrowing the traffic to two lanes rather than these four lane speedways that we have all over town. Um, but for this poor woman, a 62-year-old nurse from the Veterans Hospital who was just walking across the street along the ditch to get a cup of coffee at uh, a new coffee shop that we have uh, near uh, Rio Grande and uh, I-40. Um, she, was, she was hit and killed. Uh, and it's been kind of traumatic for the whole neighborhood. Um, we've had a meeting with city officials about it. This is a problem that's not unique to the North Valley. Mm -hmm. um, although the ditch crossings are valley phenomenon. Uh, and there needs to be a lot of coordination in order to, to create crosswalks uh, where there aren't any right now. That's right. Um, so we're hoping that the, that the mayor's um, new program, the Vision Zero, which is envisions zero pedestrian fatalities, 
uh, will, will have some effect, but I'm sure it's going to be very controversial, uh, just as the red light cameras were controversial because it envisions uh, stationing uh, vans, uh, speed vans in various neighborhoods mm -hmm. uh, as uh, according to the need. And so uh, people will be, uh, you know, their traffic will be monitored more closely. Mm -hmm. I'm very sad to hear that. As you know, you know, Dee Dee, we used to be neighbors. I used to live up that way, so I know exactly where you're talking about. That's a very heavily traveled crossing area, ditch to ditch to get across that road. And honestly, that part of Indian School from the Rotary to the roundabout, I should say, the, from the okay. roundabout to Rio Grande is an absolute yeah. 70 mile an hour speedway. speedway. Yes. It's insane. And, and yeah. please go ahead. Well, and, and the problem is, you know, with our uh, our crime situation in Albuquerque, it's not a question of posting more police in that mm -hmm. area. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the mayor's idea is to use uh, cars and a technological solution rather than additional police protection, mm -hmm. which, uh, which you know, we can't afford as a city right now. That's right. But um, it's, it's, it's really sad. And I think it's, 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 it's kind of a pro uh, product of the pandemic. People are really eager to get out. They really want to go. They want to go fast. They want to go buy something. They want to get to where they're going. And um, it's, it's worse than usual. It is. There's, it, there's no other way to say it. it's not anecdotal. It's factual. It is worse than usual. I'm sorry to hear about that story for that woman and her family in the North Valley there uh, being killed like that. Ouch. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, TJ Trout, KKOB. I got a funny feeling you guys will be talking about red light cameras coming up here soon on your radio show. It's almost irresistible. Okay, <laughs> Say again? Right. All right, so do you want, you want something local or you want something re regional? What do you want? How about local? I like your local, local stuff. Of course you would say local and I wanted to go regional. Okay, we, we will go local then. I'm gonna start with a plastic bag ban, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, that, that's July 1st, right? It goes yep. into effect July 1st. Yeah, because I've gotten a few whiners on the air who listen. And then even some whiners that work at the radio station came. Uh, and look, my advice to them is just do it. Quit complaining. Uh -huh. it, it, it's a small ask when considering the harm the bags do to the environment. Now, especially on our coasts and in our water rates. I mean, the, the bags are the worst because they mm -hmm. fill with water, they become heavy, they clog water intakes, they kill fish and animals. And aesthetically, they look terrible, they look horrible. Mm -hmm. So, uh, bottom, I always bottom line this. I ask myself the question, is the world a better place with or without them? I say without. So look, right. Please <laughs> do me a favor. <laughs> Go get some reusable plastic bags. Use paper. Okay. Yeah. And stores. Yeah. Either give them away or sell them to us back at cost. Just uh, make it simple for all of us. Please. I, I got to ask. I, though, beg dude. You. I got to ask. The local was yeah. so good. What did you have teed up for regional? Was it something? Yeah, go ahead and oh, do I it, man. Regional? I was gonna go. I was gonna go after uh, the Maricopa County uh, boat audit. Oh, that crazy clown car of, of lunatics out there who are counting the votes, <laughs> recounting and recounting and recounting. In a secret. And Democrats, Democrats, you need to pay attention to this. I talked to plenty of Democrats in the party, and you're laughing it off. Do not laugh this off. This is going somewhere, whether you like it or not. Did I say there, yeah, was I a, both, I both there was a secret lair or something where these votes were taken, were being tallied, something, Montana or something? I didn't correct. A cabin. Quite, in yeah. a cabin, right. This is getting very yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're, they're looking for, for chi they're looking for bamboo in the ballots. That's right, bamboo because paper. Because they think the Chinese stuffed the ballot boxes. Yeah. That's right. Give me a break. <laughs> We'll have to wrap it up on that note. I love TJ being here. Thanks for joining us. New Mexico in Focus airs Friday nights and Sunday mornings right here on New Mexico PBS.